Once again, we're here at ITV. My name is Imam Ayub Abdul Baki, and we are dealing with the issue of 1619. But before we get into that, my cameraman asked me the other day, then who discovered America? <laughs> the answer to that in a nutshell is that you cannot say that anyone discovered America. Even though Al Masudi had uh, mapped out this area and it was known that Al Adrisia also had knowledge that the world was not square, it was not flat. The world was round, and there was the other land on the other side of that. We find this out in the, what is called the Peri uh document, which was given to the Khalifa, which was a map of what we call the whole entire world, mapping out Africa, Asia, Europe, America, North and South. North, these areas being called the unknown territories, but they were knowledgeable to the fact that there were people there. And all throughout human history, we have a constant exchange of human, civil, uh, human civilizations, nations conquering nations, people migrating, making hijra, moving from one area of the world to a, an, another. It is said that seven or several raves of people have came out of Africa some towards Asia, some towards what we call Asia Minor, and some call some towards Europa, and definitely some move this way. Because if we look at Leo Warner in his book called Black Discovery of America, or we look in Ivan Van Sertiman's book, you know, they came before Columbus, or we look at, you know, even Dr. Abdullah Hakim's quick book, Deeper Roots, African Caribbean Presence, uh, long before Columbus, we see that Islam had numerous amount of possibilities to expand and to come in contact with these particular individuals on this side of the world, but they don't call it discovery. They call it cultural exchange, they call it dealing import, export, enclave, they don't call it slavery, colonization, or anything like that, because when Columbus came in contact with the Americas, he ran into a people who were called the Garifuna people. The Garifuna people were in Honduras, they were in Belize, they were in Jamaica, they were in other areas of the Caribbean, and so Columbus said that these must have been slaves, but and something must have happened to the ship, and they in turn was enslaved and, and, and found in, in these particular areas, but they're indigenous because the word Garifuna means a union between Africans as well as Native American people. So they were a combination of that. So they were brown. There were olives, there were Swati, there were many different uh, shades of people which they came in contact with. And as I mentioned in the previous session, that we have an omnic civilization in, 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 in Mexico, pyramids, similar to the pyramids in Egypt. And we also find pyramids in the ocean off the coast of Cuba. You find pyramids off the coast of Japan. You find pyramids all throughout the world. So how did these pyramids get it? My synopsis is that at one time, the whole entire world 
was one conglomeration, one body. Some say Guana land or, you know, but somewhere along the line, as we're talking about thousands and upon thousands of years, the earth began to shift. But if you look at Africa and you look at South America, if it was to break them apart and put them together, they will fit like a puzzle. All the areas will fit like a puzzle. New York will fit into Africa. The only missing piece will be that piece of land in the middle, which they call, call the lost uh, city of Atlantis, because there was a big people who lived in this region and they inhabited it and they had power and authority and sultanship. But as most cases, your history or my history become lost, stolen, or strayed. You know, that's why you have books like Stolen Legacies, you know, and uh, the author of that points out that, you know, you had Africans influence Greek, Crete, you know, Southern Europe, Italy, Sicily, all of these areas was influenced at one particular time by Africans. So all of these areas were united. And they even say that India, which today is a separate entity in Southeast Asia, India was at one time port and parcel of Africa. And somewhere along the line when the continents broke away and they, you know, India was thrust into Asia, and that's where we get the Himalaya mountain. A lot knows best. So we can't say who was first and, and who was second. I say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in various forms and various different tribes and nations, and He made us who we are. And the noblest of us is the one who has taqwa and piety and God consciousness. This is the one who will be the successor. That's why whenever Islam went, the Quran was taken, it gave rise to growth and development and civilization. Wherever the Europeans went, you had total colonization, destruction, imposition of Christianity upon the native people, not to liberate them spiritually, but to placate and to pacify them, and also, you know, to have them align themselves with Europe. So, when we talk about who was first and who was second, we have to be mindful that in 1324, you had Mansa Musa set, set and now he didn't set sail, so he, he made Hijra to go to Mecca and to make pilgrimage. This is well documented. He had 72,000 Muslims with him. And everywhere he went, he had so much gold that he devalued the currency of gold all throughout the world. It was a worldwide depression. And they asked him, how did you come to power? He said, I came to power because my predecessor, Abu Bakr Muhammad, the second, you know, he had left the west coast of Africa, it is said, with 2,000 ships from the Guinea coast, and he in turn went to the Americas never to return. So this is how Mansa Musa came to power. And when we look at South and Central America, and as well as America itself, because in America you see that on the Alleghenies Mountains, it was written Muhammad Rasulullah. And also you see a depiction of an elephant. There, there was no elephants. Previously, there were dinosaurs who were similar to elephants, but we're talking about actual African elephant drawn on the wall, as well as Mandike script, which has been deciphered by the people uh, later on. That's why we say there's all kinds of anthropological, linguistic, cultural evidence that the African Muslims were here. And of course, they went down the Amazon River, and wherever they went, they set up civilizations and set up state city-states. 
and they also came up the Mississippi River and they also did the same thing. So we don't say, or we as Muslims should say, that we cannot say that we discovered America. We cannot even say that Africans discovered America. There were always people here. And so those people intermingled over a period of time with the indigenous people and subsequently they became part and parcel of the American, uh, America's experience. You know, and we have to understand that. In the other half, in the next session, I will talk about on how it moved towards the east and it gave rise to other things as well. And I want to conclude this at the present time and says, a lot of people says, rarely in their history, there is, there, is, there is a lesson of understanding, for men of understanding, and we take that lesson very seriously. So bear with me and I'll see you the next session, which will be a continuation of this subject.